Hey guys, I'm going to go over your test review. So if for any reason you miss school or if you're a virtual student, this is how you can get help on your review. So in these top boxes, you're going to write what the symbol notation is for each of these. So for a conditional statement, it's P, then Q. For an inverse, that's not not, which is not P, then not Q. Converse is flip-flop, which means that it's Q, then P. And then contrapositive is flip-flop and not not. In other words, it's not Q, then not P. Okay, so we're going to use that to come up with all of these sentences. So this is going to always be my hypothesis, which is all of these P's. This will always be my conclusion, which is all of these Q's. And you're going to write it in the same order as these symbols. So a conditional is right here. It's just if P, then Q. So if, and then I write the P, which is two angles form a linear pair. So that's my if P. And then you do then Q. So then, and Q is they are adjacent angles. Okay, now let's see if this sentence is true or not. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are adjacent angles. That's actually in the definition. It's not all of it, but it is in the definition. So yes, linear pairs have to be adjacent angles. Inverse is not not. So we're going to write still P then Q, but we're going to put nots in there. So if and then instead of saying two angles form a linear pair, we're going to say two angles do not or don't form a linear pair. Then, and then you would say not Q, which means instead of saying they are adjacent angles, you will say they are not adjacent angles or they aren't adjacent angles. So is this one true or false? If two angles do not form a linear pair, then they are not adjacent angles. Well, that's not true because you can have adjacent angles that aren't linear pairs. You can have an angle that looks like this. So those are adjacent angles, but they definitely don't form a straight line. So this one is false. The converse is flip-flop. So instead of if P then Q, we're going to say if Q then P. So if, and then my Q is they are adjacent angles. So instead of using that pronoun they, we're going to replace it with two angles. So if two angles are adjacent, then we don't have to say two angles anymore because we already did. So now we can use that word they. Then they form a linear pair. So if two angles are adjacent, then they form a linear pair. But that's not true, and I can use the exact same example again. These are two adjacent angles, but they don't form a linear pair. So this is false. And then contrapositive is flip-flop, not-not. So we have to do if, Q, then P, but put nots in there. So instead of saying if two angles are adjacent, we're going to say if two angles are not adjacent or if two angles aren't adjacent.
then instead of saying they form a linear pair, then you would say they do not form a linear pair or they don't form a linear pair. Now let's see if this is true or false. If two angles are not adjacent, then they do not form a linear pair. Well, in order to be a linear pair, they have to be adjacent. So if you know they're not adjacent, then you obviously would know they're not a linear pair. So this one is true. All right, biconditional statements are P if and only if Q. So read as P if and only if Q. Like that. All right, so this should have been corrected on yours already, but it was not on the one before I imported it into here. So it should say P should be the sum of two angles is 90 degrees and Q should be their complementary. So the conditional is if P then Q. So if the sum of two angles is 90 degrees, then they are complementary. So is that true? If the sum of two angles is 90 degrees, are they complementary? Well, yes, that's the definition of a complementary angle. Complementary angles takes more than one. The converse is if Q then P. So if and instead of saying they are complementary, then you would say if two angles are complementary. Then um, the sum of the two angles is 90 degrees, or the sum of, or their sum is. 90 degrees. You can say it any of those ways. It's not really about the semantics. It's about making sure you know what you're talking about. So then their sum is 90 degrees. So is that true? If two angles are complementary, then their sum is 90 degrees. Yes, that is the definition of complementary angles. So because these are both true, they have to both be true for you to be able to write a biconditional, but because they're both true, we can write one. So we don't write if, we just write P, which is the sum of two angles is 90 degrees. And then, instead of then, you say if and only if. And then you write the rest of Q. So they are complementary. Which, of course, is a definition, which means it's true. Now we have an algebraic proof. Always with proof, proof, bleh, proofs, you write the given first, always, always, always. And you write the proof part down here on the last statement. Your reason for the first statement is always going to be given. Now the number one thing you never, ever, ever want to do is write proof here. This is a no, no. Never, ever, ever do that. We're trying to prove that x equals negative 9 by steps. None of those steps will be the word prove ever. So the first thing we do is distribute 8. So since we're distributing, the reason is the distribution property. So when we distribute, it's 8x minus 8, which is equal to 5x minus 35. 
you can write it out all the way. Then we would subtract 5x on both sides. So because we're subtracting, it's a subtraction property of equality, which gives us 3x minus 8. These cancel and equals negative 35. Then the next thing that we would do would be to add 8 to both sides, which is the addition property of equality. This cancels and it gives me 3x is equal to negative 27. And then the next thing we would do to find negative 9 is to divide both sides by 3. So since we're dividing, it's the division property of equality. And that's the end of the review. Good luck on your test.